I went from this to this in around eight months doing one major thing, being in a calorie deficit. If you're new to my channel, welcome. When I first started on my fitness lifestyle, I honestly didn't really understand how important nutrition would be for me to really see significant changes. I had been working out for a solid year, but my nutrition was just inconsistent. And when I really started paying attention to what I was putting into my body, what I was consuming, and then I started to understand what a calorie deficit was and what that looked like for my body and my goals, that's when things started to significantly change. Today I'm going to explain, one, what a calorie deficit is, and two, some tips and tricks on how you can be in a calorie deficit to reach your fitness goals. Let's get it. All right, so first things first is, what is a calorie deficit? Imagine that you have a piggy bank, like when you were a kid and you were collecting coins, right? So you have this piggy bank and you get a certain amount of coins to put into the piggy bank daily. Let's call those coins calories. Your body needs a specific amount of coins every day to maintain the weight of the piggy bank. And this is called your maintenance level. Now, if you want to lose weight, you need to take out more coins from the piggy bank than you put in. This means that you need to eat fewer calories than your body uses. And this is what the deficit is. It's like spending more coins than you earn so your piggy bank gets lighter and lighter and you lose more weight. If you want to know your specific calorie deficit for you, there are apps, there are trackers on Google. I will include a tracker in the description below. But basically, you have your goal weight, right? We all have your goals in mind. I'll tell you mine. My goal weight is 185. Right now, I'm 190. But when I first started on this journey, I was 235. So I entered what my starting weight was. I entered how active I was. And I basically, it calculates for me, okay, based on your current weight and your goal weight, and how active you are, this is the amount of calories that you should be consuming. And most of us, if we're being honest, we consume way more than necessary for our goals and just in general. For me, my calorie deficit is staying within 1,900 to 2,000 calories every single day. If I go over that, then I'm usually maintaining my weight. If I go under it, I lose weight. And if I go over it, I gain weight. So now that we all understand what a calorie deficit is, Let's get into four tips I'm gonna give you guys on how you can eat healthy and still be in your calorie deficit. These tips are gonna keep you satisfied and full while also helping you lose the weight that you want. All right, so tip number one. I know this is, this is one. You need to be focusing on nutrition-dense foods. What I mean by this is high in protein, vegetables, cutting out processed sugar, excessive amount of carbs and there's good carbs and bad carbs but for the sake of this tip just focus on nutrition dense food so instead of maybe eating fast food burger with some fries and a coke focus on nutrition dense food so have chicken in a salad with potatoes and it has a lot of good stuff in it that's going to keep you full longer and give you energy as well throughout the day. If you guys are interested in like a list of high protein nutrition foods, please let me know in the comments below. I will create something for you guys, some type of ebook or something. Food is really gonna be the game changer for you on your fitness and weight loss journey. And what you're consuming is gonna be a direct effect of how your body's gonna look. Tip number two, and I talk about this all the time, is do not drink your calories. What I mean by that is for one, alcohol. You guys are new to this channel. I have stopped drinking alcohol. I've been sober since October of last year and it's made a huge difference on my fitness journey. And that's what I mean by drinking your calories. Things like alcohol, soda, juice, all those things are very high in calories and we don't even sometimes realize how high in calories they are. So if you're having three meals throughout the day and say your calorie deficit, what your goal is to be 1900 calories a day, right? But you're drinking some, maybe two, three cans of soda a day, a glass of juice, that is probably gonna help you attribute to going over your calories. So one of the worst thing you can do is drink your calories. So what I personally do, I drink a lot of water, try to drink a gallon a day. I also 
I get it. You're like, I don't want to drink water all the freaking time. So I'm a huge advocate of sparkling water. Actually, let me, let me get the water. Ooh. <laughs> right so just so you guys know i'm about that sparkling water life so this literally is from my fridge i wish you guys can feel how cool it is and pellegrino this is one of my favorite sparkling waters none of this is sponsored if y'all want to sponsor me please because i buy from y'all all the time as you guys can see here i'm going to show you guys the label this has zero calories and it's delicious it gives you a little hint of these flavors without the added calories another sparkling water i freaking love Chi fours, okay, I get these babies from Costco. If you guys have a Costco where you're at, check them out. Another sparkling water that is flavored, lychee, am I pronouncing that right? Lychee fizzy, naturally flavored, and look at that, zero calories. This is an example of, I get it, everybody doesn't wanna consume water, just regular water all day, every day, even though it's great for you and it will help you with your weight loss journey. But if you do have a kick, a craving, then you don't want water, but you're trying to cut back juice and soda, try some sparkling water that's flavored. And I promise you, sometimes you just need a little bit of carbonation to get you through the day, and it does the trick. So tip number three is that you need to eat more mindfully. And I didn't fully understand this when I first started on my fitness journey, but now that I'm in a routine, I've lost weight, I've lost a significant amount of weight, I, I really understand what this means. And what this means is when you're sitting down for a meal, right, don't just eat it all super fast and, and you're not even thinking about what you're putting into your body and you're just like scuffing it down, right? Mindfully eating means really take time to curate your plate and what you have on it and, and really enjoy it. Like eat slower and digest your food and chew slower and just pay attention to what you're consuming. Because I know early on to my fitness journey, I kind of just ate all the time. Like I, out of, sometimes out of boredom even. I was a huge snacker. I still snack, but it's healthier snacks and I don't snack as much as I once did. And I am more mindful of what I'm consuming. I'm very tuned in to what's on my plate and I'm pretty self-aware. I'm like, okay, I'll give you an example. Last night, me and my husband and one of our best friends went to the Cheesecake Factory. I had already eaten earlier that day. So I was mindful of that. I was like, okay, look, I wanna hang out, we're at a restaurant, but I'm not really hungry. I just had food a couple hours ago. So what I do, I got a slice of cheesecake. Mind you, Cheesecake Factory cheesecakes are hella high in calories. <laughs> One slice of cheesecake is like a thousand calories. So what did I do? I literally, I cut it in half. I asked them for a to-go box. I put the other half in the to-go box and I ate half of that cheesecake. And I was fine. I felt satisfied. I got a little, you know, my sweetness in it. And half of that is 500 to 400 calories, right? So I knew that I was gonna still be under my calorie deficit and I still was able to go out and enjoy myself. And that's what I mean by eating mindfully. What I would used to do, I would just had come from eating maybe a couple hours ago. Someone invites me to go eat, what do I do? I'm like, okay, we're here, let me get something else. I would eat that and then I have to get a dessert. So that's what I mean by eating mindfully. Just pay attention to what you're consuming. Oftentimes food has a direct correlation to how we feel. And I didn't really notice this until I started eating more mindfully. I was a huge candy advocate. I, I low key had a candy addiction. And I was just eating candy almost every single day. And I was always having headaches. I was breaking out. Um, mosquitoes were always eating me up <laughs> and I was just like dang what's going on and then when I stopped eating candy every day I was like oh I don't have headaches anymore oh my skin has cleared up so when you are mindful about what you're putting into your body you can be more attuned to what's happening in it all right before we get to the very last tip if you are enjoying this video make sure you are subscribed and make sure you like this video and engage with me in the comments below. I really want to know what you guys are struggling with, if this video was helpful for you, if you understand now what calorie deficit is. Let's encourage each other because this lifestyle is not an easy one and I think that it's so important to have support of other people around you. And make sure you guys are following me on my social media channels, which I have linked down below too. I post a lot of my workouts on social media and you guys can just get to know me a little bit more on those platforms. So. Let's get into the last tip. As much as you can, try to plan and prep your meals. And this 
definitely has significantly helped me on my weight loss journey. Now, I'm not Betty Crocker, right? <laughs> I am married, I have a dog, and I have a, I have other responsibilities. So I'm not always able to meal prep all the time and perfectly curate it. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that when you go grocery shopping and you kind of plan your week, think about what you're going to eat for that week. Maybe be preemptive and chop your vegetables that you want to plan. Know that you want to do chicken certain days or steak another day. We have a calendar. Let me pan so y'all can see the calendar. This is the calendar of our household, the Amanla Castle. That's me. Amanla now is my married name. Um, and this is our castle. And, there, and there's a point, there's a grocery thing on the calendar. And it's also a menu. So sometimes throughout the week, I will write out that menu to help me know what I want to cook. And it honestly, it helps a lot kind of just having a plan. I feel like sometimes a lot of overeating happens, at least within my personal life, when I didn't have a plan. When I may have had food in the fridge, but I didn't necessarily plan out what I want to eat or prep anything. So now I'm lazy. I'm like, ah, I don't really feel like cooking. I don't really feel like prepping. Let me just order out. And that's how it started. So I think that if you have a plan, if you are able to prep any of your food in advance and you know what you're going to eat, it's going to help you tremendously. You don't get the body of your dreams by accident, right? It's very intentional. So have a plan, prep your food as much as you can. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching this video. I really do hope that it was helpful for you. If you like the video, make sure you subscribe and send a thumbs up. And if you guys have any questions at all in the comments below, please leave them. I love to hear from you guys. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.